Nestled in the heart of South Jersey is what is described as a free black community. Fewer than 60 people live here and its size, only 52 acres. Until about 15 years ago, this was just a black section of town. People didn't realize it was historic. Guy Weston is the seventh generation owner of his family's Timbuktu land. And it goes on to describe the who bought and, and sold the premises. Weston showed us the deed from his great, great grandfather. His mother, Mary Giles Weston, shared other precious family documents dating back almost 200 years. This is my cousin Lillian, and they kept every, she was one of the older sisters. Weston wanted more connection with his ancestors and began his own research. People say that if you want to know your history before 1870 and you're black, forget it because there's no information. That is absolutely false. First emancipation, which was 1780 to 1804, long before Juneteenth, which was 1865. Enslaved black people at Timbuktu were free 60 years before Juneteenth, which commemorates the day when Union troops freed enslaved blacks in Texas, some two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Weston learned his family members were some of the first residents to settle here. The Quakers sold the original parcels of land to the Parker family in 1826. The patriarch, David Parker, was considered the mayor. This is Eliza Parker, which is David Parker's first wife. She died in 1847. Their graves are less than a block away from Weston's family home. Today, the cemetery and the Zion Wesleyan Methodist Episcopal African Church are the only above ground evidence of this historic community. Most of the remaining gravestones are of colored soldiers who fought in the Civil War. This particular one is Charles H. Love. He was married to a relative of my great, great grandmother. It's the American story. In 2008, archaeologist Chris Barton says his advisors met with West Hampton Mayor to keep Timbuktu's rich history alive. It's about struggle, right? It's about perseverance, but it's also, also about hope. They began excavation. William Davis right here. He's born in 1836. He serves in the United States uh, Colored Troops. His house is the one that we excavate. And how do you know that was his house? Um, based off of deed records. They discovered more than 14,000 artifacts. And in 2019, Guy Weston created the Timbuktu Historical Society. Chris Barton helped secure funding and they obtained ownership of the cemetery. Cemetery that we used to play, hide and go seek. Never knew that it was- Was um, that the cemetery we were Yes, at? never knew that they were soldiers from the Civil War. Joyce Couch's family moved here in the early 1900s, and she grew up here. When we came up, they didn't teach black history at all, yeah. you know, and we knew, you know, so let alone, you know, like, we, know, we didn't know about Bucktoe. Lou Rogers also was raised here and says Bucktoe was the nickname given to the place where poor blacks lived. But today, this land is hailed as one of New Jersey's historic sites. We really need to know where we came from to know where we are going, and we need to realize that all of our history was not ugly history. There's beautiful history, there is compelling history, there's history that will surprise you. Are you ever done researching? No, it never. One of my cousins emailed me and said, is a family tree done? No, it's never done. A family tree with roots that tell a story of free blacks well before Juneteenth. Lakeisha Bailey, CBS News, Philadelphia.